Hello everyone and welcome to the Oakland Open Series. I'm Glenn Jones and I'm joined in the booth by Matt Nass. Hi everyone. Matt, welcome. You've started off the tournament 2-1 and we had you as a feature match yep. on round one of SCG Live and the deck you were playing is a nice one, yes. uh, as our, I'm sure our commentators said. It looks like basically the best Theros draft deck we've ever seen, but of course it's not a Theros draft deck. Yeah. Uh, you you came playing basically a almost mono-white heroic dot deck, so what made you want to sleeve this up for Oakland? Um, so I think part of it is that like one of the most popular decks right now is the Mono Blue Devotion deck, and one like kind of hole in it is that it has almost no removal in it. Sure. They play a couple of Pongifies and some sometimes Cyclonic Rift, but very little removal. So I wanted to punish them by just making large creatures. And just bashing through. And of course, even if they actually have you know something, you have defensive elements like Radio Elements. That's and one of the big cards willing, yeah. the Boros deck has been using to push through against yeah, that deck yeah. already. Yeah. Like if they play Master of Waves to make a lot of chump blockers, you might yeah. think that would be problematic. But Instead, you just run right through. Yeah. Uh, so you do run somewhat like the Boros deck, a bit of a curve. You've got the Soldier of the Pantheon. Everyone knows this card's very good. Yeah. Uh, you've borrowed a page a out of Mono Blue Devotions. Uh, a little non with Common Bond, yeah. Uh, other than, and Armadillo Cloak in the sideboard. But. So as targets for the effects of Common Bond, uh, you've also you've got Favorite Hoplite. Judge's yeah. Familiar is pretty evasive. Yeah. Uh, Fencing Ace, obviously pretty difficult to block once he gets a counter or two on him. Yeah. Uh, Phalanx Leader gets a little bigger than expected. Yeah. And last but not least, uh, Limited All-Star Fable Hero, who has never played a fair game of Magic in his life. Yeah. <coughs> so I guess, did, you, did any creatures not wind up making the cut here? Or where, how did you decide on these six specifically? Um, <clears throat> so we considered a bunch of different creatures. Uh, other ones that we considered are like Dryad Militant, sure. which is like kind of similar to Soldier of the Pantheon. The it has the benefit of being able to be targeted by common, common bond, bond and, yeah. and the like, and can also be cast off green. But the deck's so heavy white anyway that the green cost isn't a big issue. And Soldier's benefits are so great that it yeah. makes up for it. This is a field filled with Frostburn Weirds and the like, and being able to run through, and Blood Barons even. Like yeah. just getting through those unblocked is a pretty big deal. Yeah, so we also considered Fiend Slayer Paladin. Uh, which sure. is like a kind of hard to kill creature that has a lifelink, so it has some synergy with the pump. Yeah, from the old days of Band Hexproof, it makes sense. Sure, but, but uh, I think Fable Zero is stronger. Uh, Voice of Resurgence was considered because we don't want people messing with us on our turn. Yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, that was considered, but I like the more all in creatures than the voice in the sideboard. Sure. I mean, I'm certain it makes for more entertaining games. Yeah, uh, yeah. Especially when you're just crashing through for damage. I saw a fencing ace crashing over for 14, while yeah. Blood Baron looked on haplessly as God's willing forced it through just just a round ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving on down, we've talked about a lot of your defensive elements, but two of them stick out a lot. Uh, God's willing, we can kind of get that. It's a, a pseudo brave the elements, but you have the advantage of triggering heroic and scrying. Yeah. But you've also got Dauntless onslaught. Yeah. Another another draft all star to give you a, a huge boost of damage with the double strikers. Yeah. But I'm way more interested in Warrior's Lesson. Yeah, I think that's probably the best card in the deck, and maybe the card that we were trying to exploit most. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so for one mana, you can enable Heroic on anything, and it's just often like podcast one mana draw two, and occasionally even Ancestral Recall. Occasionally you get to target one of these double striking creatures and yeah. just really go to town. And I still have yet to do it, but you could get a one <laughs> mana draw for You if, have the dream. If, if you uh, hit two double strikers, but that is yet to happen so far. But uh, sometimes you don't draw two, sometimes even, like last game I went turn one favorite hoplite, turn two double warriors last time. So, it was, so, and then I had a 3-4 on turn two attacking and was cycling a couple cards. Cycling battle growth is nothing to be ashamed of. Really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, this deck is a unique take on the mono white aggressive element that's already been doing kind of well on standard. Uh, I'm yeah. very interested to see where it goes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining me and good luck in the rest of the tournament. Thank you.